Hello, today I wanted to talk about all the books I read in the month of September. So obviously you would have seen a dedicated book review on my channel, but the first thing I read this month was Beautiful World, Where Are You? by Sally Rooney. I am a Sally Rooney super fan. I really appreciate the character work she does. I liken her to more of a modern day Austin where it is really heavy character work. There's not a lot in terms of plot, but it is the characters that really keep, um, that really contribute to these attachments that I have. Beautiful World, Where Are You? follows two women and two men. Of course, the two women are friends and I heartily believe that there are no love stories quite like female friendships. It's why Austin's one of my favorite writers and Sally Rooney is quickly jumping up to that status as well because there is no drama or love or anything in this world quite like a female friendship. So she really leans into that in her books. So again, in this book, we follow two friends as one is a famous writer who has recently taken a step back from the spotlight as she's really struggling with this level of fame. Another is a young woman who works in publishing in Dublin and we follow them, their friendship together um, as they're separated and find different men in their lives. So definitely would recommend this one. This one was like a perfect combination of the things I loved about conversations with friends and the things I loved about normal people, but kind of without the cons. So if you would have seen my book review, I basically raved about it. That being said, obviously I rated this book five out of five. I really liked it. Great contemporary fiction and would recommend, especially for this fall season before it gets snowy. It just had like a cozy kind of chilly vibes. So if that's what you're looking for, I would definitely recommend this book to pick up. So this is gonna seem excessive and silly, but I reread Brandon Sanderson's Rhythm of War. I kind of as a spur of the moment, there was a sale going on in Kobo and I saw this and like you might like recommend it because I've read almost every Sanderson. Um, obviously I read this about two months ago, but I saw it there and I have a dear friend of mine who has recently started and read through the Stormlight Archive besides Rhythm of War. So I've kind of been talking with her as she starts from Way of Kings and makes her way through and it's just reignited that excitement of when I first picked up this series. Um, as a lot of you probably know because it, I actually picked him up when I first started this channel, but my first Sanderson was Way of Kings. My first journey into his work, my first toe really into fantasy was Way of Kings. Um, and though I wouldn't recommend it for a lot of people, it was perfect for me and I really enjoyed it and I just got nostalgic from about a year ago and reread this one, still gave it five out of five stars. It's just, Sanderson has a way of elevating the stakes while slowly growing the world and the characters. He strikes a really good balance while doing that. So obviously stakes by book four are through the roof and just when you think it can't get any more nerve wracking, the end of Rhythm of War happens and there are just, there's so many tears, so much laughter, I don't know, I like it. The odds I'm gonna be able to hold up this stack of books with Rhythm of War being in it are zero, it's nil. And I'm not gonna attempt to hold that up because that's a signed copy and my child. Sorry if you can hear that, that's my guinea pig apparently so thirsty. I woke up and he still had a little water but it was like maybe that much. He hasn't stopped drinking since, he's very dramatic. Next, I read The Road Trip by Beth O'Leary. I rated this 2.5 out of five stars. 
I don't know. I just didn't like it. I did not like what was utilized in this story. I will say a trigger warning for attempted sexual assault and disbelief of the victim. I don't think it was for me. And that being said, skip ahead when I'm not holding this book up any longer. I will be out of spoilers, but to really let you guys know why I really would not recommend this. I kind of have to get into spoilers a little bit. So I'll hold this up. When I'm done holding it up, I'll be moving on to the next book. While reading this, obviously I just spoke about those trigger warnings. So that's going to come into play here. So again, if that is not something you would like to hear, again, skip ahead. So in this book, we follow um, a couple that has broken up about a year ago and in happenstance, they're going to the same wedding of a mutual friend. They come into the unfortunate circumstance where they crash into each other's cars, only one's remaining working and they have to buddy up onto a road trip. There's the gentleman and his kind of jackass of a friend and then there's the lead girl and her sister um and then just some random kind of weird socially awkward guy that just decided to carpool with the ladies i thought the chemistry between the characters was fine the chemistry be between the secondary characters adding to the story was also fine um, I really liked our heroine sister. She was very like sexually liberal, outspoken. Those tend to be my favorite sort of female characters um, when done correctly. And I felt this one was done correctly. That being said, in terms of the romance, when the characters we find out, when they broke up, the reason they broke up was our heroine was there was an attempted sexual assault with the man she lived with and this guy's best friend saw like half of it and told him, hey, she's cheating on you, here's the photographs. While in fact, those photographs were just documented evidence of her attempted sexual assault. When she comes back to their shared apartment, he blames her and she asks him to please um, give her the benefit of the doubt and to let her explain, but he's not interested. In that explanation, only after when they've left and she's had a proper breakdown, the sister goes to drop his stuff off that he left at the apartment and basically just tells him, hey, it's not what you thought she was sexually assaulted and you are scum of the earth. And then he feels awful and it leads him to make better decisions, change his life. And a year from that point, they're reconnected. I thought that was stupid. And obviously they wind up together. I just think that's disgusting. Do you know what? There is no redemption arc for me. If you come back to your shared home with your partner and they don't believe you when you say I wasn't cheating this guy forced himself on me there isn't a character arc for that that's not a miscommunication trope that I think is in any way romantic or good to put in a story they worked really hard to give him a redemption arc that worked and that made sense to show how much he changed he went to therapy all of that and i do believe people can change and grow here's the thing though i think when a level of toxicity manifests in a relationship you should not come back from it if someone hurts you to an extent to which you're having a breakdown or it becomes uninhabitable for you and you basically have to cut and run that's not a relationship you should revisit no matter the circumstance because there's too much toxicity already there and 
mental health is a real thing. Me emotional abuse is a real thing. And just like I think when domestic violence happens, physical violence, that relationship should never be revisited no matter how much help the other person gets. I feel the same for emotional abuse and that's what I think took place here. I just think it was reprehensible and you only find out like at the very end of the book. So I didn't even have the chance to really DNF. You find out at the end and I was like, well, that was that. Hated it. So there is my two out of five rating. I only recommend it as a two because I had a friend that read it and she said the trauma didn't bother her. Which like, I get that. But I take my books really seriously and I found it very upsetting. So we wash our hands of that. That was actually the only bad read I had this month and we have a little bit to go still. So all's not lost, but I will be donating this. Hated it. Hated it. Next, I read Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. I really liked this. This was a pure cover buy for me. I have a tendency at work to like push my vacations as far into the year as they can be. So now I have vacations coming up. I already took my first one this month and I have a, another one coming up in October. And I was walking around my bookstore just kind of waiting, seeing, it's not oftentimes I get to browse a bookstore like I normally did in a time when I didn't work with books. So it was really nice to do and I wound up seeing this one and I just thought the cover was so beautiful, I had to get it. And from a cover buy, it was one of my favorite reads this month. I really enjoyed it. Basically, we follow two sisters who are witches and one sister is getting into a certain level of trouble our, the second twin then makes the decision to call upon a demon to help her. What she actually summons is one of the seven princes of hell. And I really liked it. It just felt so spooky. I'm in October now and book two comes out in a matter of days. I already saw my pre-order is waiting for me in my office at work, but just in the name of honesty i've left it there because i can't read it until tuesday but i'm so excited to do so i've cleared the way so i can have all the time in the world to read it it is ya i will say and it does read a little bit like that in terms of like simplicity of the world and explanations but i really enjoyed it and i would recommend it especially for the month of october as we move towards halloween really liked it. I will say also, which I don't find all the time was, I don't know if I'm showing it. I found the description of hell to be very um, easy to follow, if that helps. She created a world that I could, that visually I was able to really step into. Next, I read a romance that I actually enjoyed road trip um the spanish love deception the spanish love deception by elena armas i really enjoyed this one i had seen it through a bookstagram that i followed i saw that the author was tagged so i went and followed the author who is a bookstagrammer turned author and i couldn't find it. I have a Kobo, not a Kindle, and it wasn't available on that. So I ordered the hard copy. It came in like two days, which was great. And I really, really enjoyed it. We're following a young woman named Catalina who works in New York and has to go back to Spain where she's from for a wedding. And basically, through unlikely events kind of stumbles into a lie but then doesn't correct it so she has to bring Aaron a man she works with in the office they hate each other um to a wedding as her date 
and it is like a fake dating trope. I thought it was a lot of fun. The chemistry was definitely there. I just really enjoyed it. It reminded me, I would liken it to a sort of Pride and Prejudice enemies to lovers where they're not quite enemies. They just sincerely, one of them does not like the other, whereas the other's just more of a stoic person. Um, and that rubs our main heroine the wrong way. So I don't think I would qualify it as a straight retelling of Pride and Prejudice, but there are definitely elements that are borrowed that I really enjoyed as that. So that and Emma are my favorite Austins. Next, I reread A Deadly Education from Naomi, from Naomi Novak, um, an author I really enjoy. I love Uprooted. I love Spinning Silver. I read this one when it originally came out. I pre-ordered it. She is an auto buy author for me. I will say this one, I rated four out of five again. I do really like it. I just wouldn't necessarily recommend it for everyone. There's a tendency with this series um, for the narrator, who is our main heroine, to just digress. So we will be following in real time what's happening to her. And it's a very interesting school. It's a very interesting concept, but oftentimes the narrator will digress into just like thought bomb it. I really like that because I think it's very funny and realistic to sort of, truthfully, the heroine reminds me of one of my friends that has ADHD and she's so funny to me but trying to get her to tell a story is like pulling teeth if she's trying to tell me what she did at work today it's going to take her 20 minutes because every secondary stream of thought she has she has to vocalize and that's very endearing to me probably because it reminds me so much of my friend and that's what our main character l does as well but I reread this, really enjoyed it, gave it four out of five stars. If you're unfamiliar with the series, we're following a young woman named Elle who is a dark magician who goes to Scholomance, which is a magic training school. It is a very vicious school where demons are lurking around every corner. There's no professors or anything. The school itself is charmed so that's what teaches you and basically you make it the four years by creating alliances and having friends to watch your back as you go through everyday occurrences like eating food in the cafeteria taking a shower brushing your teeth washing your face you need to form alliances to ensure you're not going to be caught unaware when your guard is down however when we start the book we come to realize that l only has one friend People don't really like her. She's kind of mean. Her go-to mode of communication is just fury and anger and like spitting venom at people. Um, and she catches the attention and the friendship of the school hero, Orion, um, who everybody loves. He's the strongest demon slayer in the school. Much to the chagrin of our main heroine, he becomes quite enraptured and enamored with the fact that she treats him just like everybody else. So their budding friendship creates quite a funny dynamic. I would recommend this if you're looking for a fantasy dark academia. Really enjoyed it. But the reason I reread it was because my pre-order of The Last Graduate, which is book two in the Scholomance series came in and I rated this 4.5 out of five stars. Whereas the first one did feel like a very foundational beginning to a series, which I don't mind if I know something's going to be a series, I do kind of write it off as it's going to be probably info dumpy. It's probably going to be a little slower, but is it foundational? Is it giving me the meat to the bones of the story? If yes, then I don't count it against it because I think it's to the benefit later on. I need to give those the benefit of the doubt. And I'm glad I did because book two was great. I had a great time with it. We get to see more of our favorite characters fleshed out and the stakes definitely rise in this one. And the friendship between Elle and Orion 
really blossoms and the friendship between most of Elle's alliance blossoms and it was really nice to see a good group of female friends kind of band together as well as Elle forms her alliance for the graduation ceremony which constitutes a bunch of kids running for gates as demons attack them so I liked it I really liked it but again there is a lot of digression there is a lot of like besides the point information but I really liked it and I liked the ending lastly I didn't finish this but I started it right at the end of September I started my reread of the complete Jane Austen collection and I am about a third ish a little more than a third of the way through sense and sensibility but that is also going to be what i do today i'm just sitting down i'm reading austin i'm having a exciting great time with it i love jane austen she's one of my favorite writers i have a lot of different copies of all of my favorite books of hers which is basically all of them um unfortunately there is no stone unturned which means i have read all of them but i it's like slipping on an old card again, like that fits perfectly. I love them. I would recommend them. Very accessible in terms of classics. And I'm just really excited. And look at this beautiful, beautiful copy I got. I love it. I love her. She's just one of my favorite writers. She really just does the double middle finger to the idea of chiclet but she did that way back in the 1800s. Like she writes rom-coms or just straight satirical comedies that involve romance in such an intelligent and smart way that I find them still very applicable to today. So I'm excited. I can't wait. I'm already really enjoying it. I, I'm reading them in the order in which they were published. So next would be Pride and Prejudice, but my two favorites are Pride and Prejudice and Emma, and I just rewatched Pride and Prejudice last night, and I might rewatch Emma again this morning while I have my coffee. I just love it. Anyways, that's gonna be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to probably wear the same outfit and just immediately film what I'm gonna read in the month of October, as it's going to be a little bit of a different one, I think. I have a couple of weird ones going on. So uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video.